Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Extreme Performance Series video blogs. We're happy to be back sharing some great performance information. And with me today, I have one of my peers that uh, probably needs no introduction, Sadir, who is one of our Oracle gurus here at the company. Uh, but for those that don't know you, Sadir, give yourself a quick introduction. So my name is Sudhir Balasubramanian. I'm a senior staff solution architect and the global Oracle lead for uh, VMware. Essentially, I've been working with Oracle Technologies for the last 25, 26 years. And so I'm primarily pre-sales, but I also get pulled into post-sales or let's say customer escalations or customer POCs, field-facing, customer-facing partners are pretty much, you know, a jack of all trades, if you will. Wow. So besides all that introduction, I mean, your, your, your key phrase is Oracle, right? And so I know you're the guy who gets deep into the weeds there. So I hear you have some information to share with us today. And uh, I think starting was what, VVOLs versus VMDKs, is that right? Yes, that's right. There's always been this there's always been this discussion, right? To RDM or not to RDM, right? To BMDK, not to BMDK. And you know, there are always two sides to every discussion here, right? While with RDM, you do have that noisy neighbor elimination. And many people do claim that the performance is much better than BMDK, even though even though engineering has proved that the performance difference is very minimal, as you know that, Mark, right? And VMDKs, they do bring that flexibility, the ability to that table here, right? And so VWAL is that perfect bridge, which essentially is an RDM at the end of the day, but gives you all that ability, the, 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 the flexibility, the throttles, the levers to do pretty much what you want to do, right? For any business critical application, be that a database cloning, be that a database, you know, your backup, your restores and so on and so forth. And the one thing that, uh, you know, customers have been asking or clamoring about is, of course, you know, workload performance and so on and so forth. So this is a study. This is a test that we did when we ran our Oracle workloads on VWAL versus DMFS, right? The storage in question was a pure storage flash array X50 uh, with ESXi servers, Broadcom LPE 36,000 HVA. So we essentially had one VMDK on a separate TV SCSI controller from the other, you know, database component. Then the second test case was two VMDKs on two separate TV SCSI controllers Right. And the ask of the day was, let's put that on VWAL, let's put that on BMFS, run our workload and look at the metrics from an ESXi perspective, from a guest operating system perspective, from an Oracle perspective and see has those metrics or KPIs improved or is that something that we need to have a look at? Right. So from a test bed perspective, we had. This virtual machine, which was 20 vCPUs, we made sure that this virtual machine fitted within a NUMA node so we don't cross NUMA boundaries, so you don't have the NUMA noise as a contributing factor. Our virtual machine memory was made to fit within a NUMA node's memory. The Oracle SGA was very deliberately kept to a minimum, 32 gigabytes, because we wanted to stress the I.O., right? The physical I.O., not the logical I.O.s. The operating system was OEL 8.6, UVK, latest and greatest Oracle binaries, 19.15. We use Oracle ASM. That way, we want to make sure that the IOs right, are as close to raw performance as possible. You must have heard me talk about slob, silly little Oracle benchmark. That's the load generator that I used. And the scale for the test was almost a terabyte. So almost a terabyte of data going into the test case one and also test case two. We see that the average physical SCSI device writes per second, or let's say the megabyte writes per second, that has increased, right, over the test that we do for VWAL versus VMFS file system, right? And then if we start looking at the guest operating system, or if you start looking at an Oracle database or a workload perspective, right, the metric that I used here or that we used here was the number of SQLs that one is able to execute in a second, right? And when we ran that test, we saw an increase of, let's say, 10,000 versus 9,000. The metrics increased or the metrics improved from an Oracle perspective, from a guest operating system perspective, from, let's say, the ESXi perspective. So we said, okay, that's great. That was a one VMDK test. What happens if we start increasing the number of VMDKs, right? Do we see that performance increase linearly, right? And so we had two VMDKs and we ran similar tests and we saw similar results. So case in point being, right, you know, if one is looking for the flexibility and ability of a VMDK, without the negativity of RDMs, VWAL is a perfect example, right, for business critical application. And so anything to do with noisy neighbor elimination or anything to do with increasing performance, absolutely, one is able to get that. Well, and see, I think that's really interesting because, you know, a lot of people don't think about VWAL. I think VWAL adoption is something that's still growing or being considered out there. And this is, you know, a great data set to show that we shouldn't be fearful of that. Again, performance is great or better than continues to scale. And so, yeah, VVOLS is a solid architecture to run these Oracle databases on.
right and this doesn't have to be the oracles of the world it can also you know it could also be the sequels of the world or the rsps and mongo dbs and so on and so forth but oracle is just an example well i heard too that you were also um tasked with an investigation where you know we look at i think it's important what the in guest operating system is seeing and reporting as we look at kind of the io stacks and there were some kind of inconsistencies that had been reported on occasion so i i hear you've done some work in that space uh, sadir uh, tell us about that when people used to use rdm what it, what used to happen is the page table that used to get reported from the underlying stack from the underlying infrastructure storage stack the maximum transfer length and the optimal transfer length that used to get reported correctly so for example if you're running let's say a pure storage x50 in this case the maximum io size is 4 megabyte so that's why if you see in the table on the right hand side right the right hand column that's an rdm right and when we do the the sgdpd column uh, command when we run the command you see the maximum transfer length and the optimal transfer length is set to 8192 blocks which means is 4 megabyte right unfortunately what used to happen is we did not report correctly these two parameters for vmfs or for vmdk so what used to happen is when we run the same command on vmdk you see you see them reported as zero blocks or not reported right so that used to give customers a false sense of security a false lull saying oh you know what it's either zero block which means i could then set a parameter called max sector kb i could set that to whatever number i wish to set it to i could set that to zero i can set that to a default of 1280 which means if i don't do anything on 8.7 rel and oel it defaults to 1280 kilobyte right or i could even set it to 32767 which is 32 megabytes that's the maximum value as determined by the max hardware sector kb so whatever the value of the max sector kb we set on the guest operating system people used to think that yes i am able to push io workloads or i am able to push those workloads with an io size as large as that number but unfortunately that wasn't the case because at the end of the day the bandwidth and the io size is controlled by the underlying infrastructure right so what used to happen is you know when we used to move from one storage platform to another storage platform or you move from one guest operating system version right let's say rel 7 to rel 8 or even from let's say rel to oel right those numbers used to be very inconsistent so people used to get inconsistent performance and one is to wonder as to why even though i set the max sector kb for example to a number x i still have this inconsistency right so what happened was we reached out to engineering and vmware engineering and our team right we worked on this and i'm going to move on to the next slide and i'm going to show what the fix is right so essentially we ran a couple of tests here right so if you look at the uh, chart on the top we had three tests we actually ran three tests right one was without the engineering fix so essentially leave the max sector kb right to the default of 1280 right the second was leave it at a maximum or set it to a maximum of 32 megabyte and the third based on the underlying storage architecture based on the underlying storage vendor pure in this case what happens is the max io size of the storage platform is then bobbed up all the way to the guest operating system and that is set correctly so you had three tests right one with the default one with the maximum and one with a 4 megabyte essentially again the workload used here was lob silly little oracle benchmark and if you look at this parameter called work unit and that's on the left hand side of the slide here essentially we set that to a minimum because we did not want to stress what's known as the oracle redo or the oracle archiving we just wanted to push a lot of physical io right so with those three tests right if you look at the graph on the right hand side our physical writes blocks per second our write io request per second that reduced what then happened is remember the metric of the kpi that i spoke about in the last in the last use case right the execute sql per second well that increased the transaction per second increase which means with a less amount of writing with a lower amount of physical writes with a lower amount of write io per second i am able to push a lot more executes per second and i am able to push a lot of more transactions per second and i get that consistent performance across all of the test runs i have done right so i mean one could just wonder why and looking at those execute sql per second or transaction per second one one could argue and say oh you know what you have 242k with the first uh, test you had 241k with the second test and probably 243k with the te- third test and they are all kind of coming very close to each other so what's the point in setting these parameters right the point is if you were to run these tests you would get inconsistent result it's not like you will get 242 or 241 every time you might get lower numbers or higher numbers but with the test that we did we got consistent performance and we are actually showing the correct io size that the storage vendor or that the storage has 
with the guest operating system so the guest operating system is able to take correct decisions when it pushes these uh, workloads well and i think th so that's really important it, it, you know again a little bit unfortunate that you know uh, this was found through some investigation discovery but i you know optimally here uh, this does improve efficiency it allows us to bubble up the correct vendor specific uh, uh, information and then again, you know, we, we see the benefit you know, for the customer. So I think this is a, a great, not only discovery, but obviously an important fix. And if I'm correct, I think this is supposed to roll out in our 80U2 release. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Awesome. Well, you know, as we've gone through this, we certainly see, you know, some interesting uh, use cases as we maybe look towards using VVOLs. We certainly see progress as we clean up some of our efficiency, optimize some of our efficiency there too. And, you know, so the next question is going to be, Sadir, you know, where do we go for all this great information? Like, where's the spot to find anything Oracle related, uh, anything that you might want to brain dump on the community? All of the Oracle uh, Oracle on vSphere, you know, white papers, including Oracle on hybrid cloud, you know, whether that's vWall, whether that's vSAN, best practices, deployment guide, workload characterization guide, you know, technical, technical document, KB articles, blogs, pretty much everything finds this home on the Oracle on VMware one-stop shop. The link is there at the bottom of the slide, but that's pretty much where, you know, our team, uh, essentially me, I dump everything up there. So if you're looking for any Oracle licensing collaterals, you're looking for Oracle on VWall, Oracle on vSAN, Oracle with PVR DMA, or with NVMe over Fabric, any 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 such guides, pretty much that's the place, the one-stop shop where you can find those collaterals. Well, that's awesome, Sidir. Thanks for maintaining that for us. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, look forward to everybody joining us for our next Extreme Performance Series video blog edition coming soon.